Hi friends, welcome to this wonderful mini class on content writing. In this class, you are going to write about, I mean, you are going to learn about how to write amazing winning content. This mini course is brought to you. It's presented by Dematic Digital, one of the pioneers of India's digital marketing industry, which is rapidly growing. In this mini course, I'll be talking about what is content because a lot of us have some idea of what is content. Some of us have no idea of what is content. Most of us believe that content is what we see in blogs, what we see on uh, vlogs, what we see in uh, affiliate websites or what we see on websites. But that's not what content is, let me tell you. So in this mini course, I'll be teaching you the A to Zs of content so that when you finish this course and do some of the exercises that I tell you, you can be a good content writer and with amazing practice, with lots of practice, you can be a winning content writer. You can be a winner in this field. So let me start by telling you two important quotes which are very relevant nowadays. Andrew Davis, one of the gurus of digital marketing who has written books in this field says, Content builds relationships. Now, relationships we all like to build because relationships build trust and trust drives revenue. This is what Andrew Davis who has written a book says in his book. So when we have excellent content, obviously we are driving revenue and revenue is money which all of us want. Now coming back closer home, what does Avinash Kaushik who is an evangelist for Google on digital marketing have to say? He says content is anything that adds value to the reader's life. So as a content writer, what you have to do? You have to add value to the reader's life. Now who is saying this? Somebody from Google. It's not a small person. So you can imagine how important is content that two very big persons have made such wonderful quotes. Now let me tell you something about myself in all humility. I am a content writer over the past seven years. I work with Dematic Digital as a content writer. But you may think that what is this man with just seven years of experience going to teach us about content? So let me tell you a little bit about myself more. Before becoming a content writer, I was a journalist for close to 28 years or rather more than 28 years. I worked in India. I worked abroad. Most of my career was spent abroad. 22 years I was working in different countries outside India. I worked for newspapers, I worked for magazines, I have worked for TV channels, I worked for news websites and you name it. I have freelanced for radio stations also. And seven years ago, I decided I had enough of news coverage. I was fed up with the line and decided to switch on to content writing. At the beginning, it was tough, even despite having 28 years of experience. But as Mr. Pritam Nagrale guided me, I became an amazing content writer. And today I can say proudly that every day for me is superb because I learn something new, I write about something new, I have new experiences and my world is richer because I write content. Okay, my friends, so what will you be learning in this so-called mini course. I call it so-called mini course because actually you'll be learning a lot about content writing. To begin with, in this course, you will be learning what exactly is content. Because as I said earlier at the start, a lot of us have zero idea about content or a lot of us have some small ideas or some short ideas or brief ideas about content. But none of us have a clear idea about content. So I'm going to tell you exactly what content is. The real definition of content. Then we are going to discuss things like how to research for excellent content. How to find, how to write excellent content in different ways. I'll be teaching you about structures, various structures of how to structure your content, write your content. The use of different types of keywords and phrases. And eventually we will conclude by telling you about the trends of 2023. So this is an overview of this course. My name is Ashwin Honavar. 
and I welcome you to this mini course from Dematic Digital. So friends, let's start with what is content. Now many people, as I said earlier, believe that content is, you may believe that content is what we see on websites, read on websites, what we read in blogs, what we read in affiliate marketing um, websites, or what we see in social media, or something like that. Yes, these are all content. I don't deny that. You are right. But that's just the half truth. The real truth is content is information. Content is knowledge. Now, why do we call content as information? And what is exactly content? I'll define it for you. You see, my friends, the human brain, our brains, your and my brains, were made to receive content. Our brains cannot function without content. Therefore, nature or God, whoever you may believe in, gave us something to get this content for our brain. And that is our five senses. What are these five senses? You know, sight, sound, smell, taste and touch. Now, these five senses are constantly feeding us content round the clock. 24 hours a day, our five senses are feeding us content. And these content lead to thoughts. Psychology proves that an average human like me and you get between 6,000 to 7,000 thoughts within a span of 24 hours. Some of these thoughts are negative, some are positive. Unfortunately, the tendency of human beings is to play with those negative thoughts. 85% of those negative thoughts we play with. But if we play with the positive thoughts, we would be able to do positive things. You might also be wondering that how does my brain process content when I'm asleep from these five senses? So I'll ask you a simple question. You must have simply sometimes set an alarm to wake up at a specific time early in the morning. Maybe you wanted to go somewhere, you wanted to do something, or you had an appointment or something like that. Not early morning, any time of the day you set an alarm. And you are fast asleep. But when that alarm goes off, you wake up after hearing the sound. May not be at the first attempt, but at the second or third attempt, you definitely get up because you want to switch off the alarm and because you know it's time to get up. So your ears have received that content and your brain has processed that content. My friends, you must have read several times that people when asleep smelt the acrid smell of smoke and woke up only to find that there's a fire in the house. They were alerted by that smell, they extinguished the fire or they ran out of the house and saved themselves and their properties. This is how our brain processes content even when we are asleep. So our brain is the primary source of content along with our five senses, sight, sound, taste, touch and smell. Now my friends, content other than being natural, these are the natural content, what we see, what we hear. But content can also be exploited by somebody externally. What do I mean by content being exploited? That is exactly what content writers do. Content works on the thoughts of a human being. We all think, as I said, we have about 6,000 to 7,000 thoughts in a day. Now, we read something or we are made to read something that influences our thoughts. We decide to take action or we decide not to take action. Let us say, I show you a wonderful picture of Switzerland or Sikkim or Kashmir or any place. And you read some wonderful content related to that place. The first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, I wish I could afford or I wish I want to go there or for my next vacations or my next weekend, I am definitely going to that place. So I have influenced your thoughts by showing you that photo and giving you that content. Now, an advertiser does the same thing. They simply show you certain things, like let's say a very common thing, a toothpaste. And they say that this makes your teeth bright. They show your teeth sparkling somewhere. And you are tempted, oh, I want those sparkling teeth. And you definitely go and buy that brand of toothpaste and possibly the toothbrush. 
This is how content works. Now coming to the negative uses of content. Sometimes we see violent scenes. Immediately our mind is repulsed. Sometimes we hear hate speeches. These are the negative uses of content. Content can be manipulated to make us hate people. The greatest example of this till today is that of the Nazi propaganda minister who worked under Adolf Hitler for Nazi Germany. His name was Dr. Joseph Goebbels. He was the propaganda minister of Nazi Germany and till today he is known as the father of mass communications or the father of mass propaganda. Joseph Goebbels had a favorite quote. Do you know what he said? Dr. Goebbels said that a lie is repeated a thousand times ultimately becomes the truth. And that is how he would spread propaganda. Joseph Goebbels most heinous propaganda, the most cruel propaganda was against stateless citizens, gypsies and above all the Jewish community of Europe which led to the Holocaust which claimed more than a million, 1.2 million or so lives with people perishing in gas chambers, death camps and death rows randomly executed. So these are the negative uses of content. Content can be used also to influence people in a negative way or it can be used to in a positive way. For example, the textbooks that we read during our school days is also content. So this is basically an overview of content. So now my friends, you know exactly what is content. Content is information that our brain receives and our brain decides whether we should act on it or not act upon it. A simple example would be our stomach sending out signals that it is empty and the brain tells us go and eat. Similarly, when we see something or we read something, we take action or we decide not to take action and that is content. Now let me tell you what is content writing. Basically, content writing is an ancient form of communications which is relevant even till today. Ancient form. Why? You might wonder. At that time, there, were no, there was no internet, there were no computers, there were no laptop. So let me explain to you again. The ancient Egyptians, the civilizations of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro and the ancient cavemen, they all created a few drawings or they wrote in forms of hieroglyphics and whatever the language they knew on stone tablets and exchanged it as a form of communications. As you know, a lot of these Egyptologists and Harappa and Mohenjo-daro experts are trying to decipher what those hieroglyphics stand for. But one thing is proven that these stone tablets with the words from the ancient language, pictographic words from the ancient language, were exchanged between people as a form of communications. So content writing is nothing but a form of written communications. It comes in the form of a simple SMS on our phone. It can be in the form of a complex article in an engineering textbook. It could be in the form of some news which you read in the newspaper. It could be in the form of a feature that we read in a magazine. It could be in the form of a blog. It could be in the form of a marketing post, advertising or anything. Content writing means writing to give knowledge to someone else. Content writing is done, even an email contains content for that matter or letters. Content writing is a way to communicate for two businesses among each other, two corporations or two companies with each other. A company can communicate with a customer through content. A customer can communicate with a company through content. And content is the basis of communications, written communications. So content writing is nothing more than writing a message which is clear and compelling for a specific audience. Again, it can be used negatively, it can be used positively. Negative uses would mean again hate speeches, it can mean propaganda leaflets and so on, but positive uses are affiliate marketing, blogging for something good, informative websites and so on and so forth, emails, social media posts, or whatever you want to name. Now, how do we write content? This is exactly one of the problems that we all face. A lot of us, especially in India, we believe 
that content should be written in a complex way. No, it should not be. But before I tell you, come to that, that part of my lesson, I'll tell you the scope of content writing. You might have just thought that why shouldn't I be a content writer? Or you might be trying to become a content writer watching this video out of sheer curiosity. So let me tell you what is the scope of content writers. According to my research into Indian and foreign websites, over the next few years, beginning this year 2023, content writers or the demand for content will grow at an unprecedented pace of about 79%. Mind you, 79% the demand for content and content marketing will grow up. So this means that the demand for content writers is expected to go up exponentially, not only in India, but also abroad. A simple example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the demand for content went up by 26 to 28 percent, according to international sources. Why? Because governments like Government of India use content to get the message out to people, stay at home, stay safe. It was a content used in a very positive way. Similarly, there are a lot of blogs and stuff like that that people were consuming. You see, when we are all facing lockdowns and uh, had to isolate ourselves and quarantine ourselves, the demand for content and consumption of content went exponentially high during the initial stages of the COVID-19 lockdown in 2020 and 2021. And this trend is expected to continue because in 2020, a lot of businesses went online. Those who didn't go online had to suffer. They went bankrupt or they had to close down their shutters forever. So now all businesses, now that we are recovering from the pandemic, all businesses are going online, whether it's a small business or a large business. And they definitely need content for their websites or for their blogs. A lot of companies have a website and have a blog. Then we have a huge blogging community. Did you know there are about 60 million blogs in this world? Some of them are active, some of them are inactive. That's a different story. But some 63% of all these blogs are in English. And there's a huge demand for these uh, independent content writers. What is the scope therefore? It's tremendous as I told you the figures. Secondly, what are the pay scales? Now let me give you a comparison over here. Some years ago, an organization in India called as Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry or ASOCAM, which is based in New Delhi, made a report which found that only, it was a study, they found that only 7% of all MBA graduates can be employed. The remaining 93% are unemployable because they don't have skills. And those who are employed get a maximum salary of about 10,000 rupees a month. In stark contrast, a content writer can make 15 to 20,000 or even 25,000 at the very beginning. You just have minimal experience or zero experience. You can still start your career with 15,000 to 25,000 rupees a month. Now that is much more than a lot of professions what they would pay. And content writing evolves because as you continue to learn, as you continue to write better, obviously the demand for your service is going to go up. In India and abroad, there are many ways to work as a content writer. The first one is an SEO writer. What's an SEO writer? Search engine optimization writer. These writers blend keywords into their content. These keywords are useful for the organization to rank the content up on Google searches. The second one are freelancers. You might have heard about freelancers. There's a huge demand for freelance content writers uh, from India in foreign countries as well. Just to give you an example, if you see my profile on Upwork, I charge $50 an hour, now which is not a small amount. Going by the current interest, uh, current exchange rates, it's about 4,500 rupees one hour. That is how much you can make provided you have that experience in writing content. As a content writer, you can also be an author, you can write books, you can write ebooks, and sell them online or offline. Normally nowadays, a lot of people go to Kindle to stop publishing 
and publish their books. As a content writer, you can be writing press releases for companies. You can work in corporate communications or public relations and write press releases on behalf of your company. You can also work for a PR firm. You can work in any organization in their digital marketing services. For example, if you're working for a food company, you can just write descriptions of their food, which sell, which entice people to try the food and enjoy it. There's no shortage of what, again, oh no, I'll tell you some other more things. There's no shortage of jobs for content writers. According to research, content writers is going to be one of the professions with zero or very minimal unemployment rate. Of course, I'm not saying that there are no risks, there are risks. But all these risks are related to how good a content writer you are. Industries will go up and go down, but content writing as a profession will remain. It was proven during the COVID-19 pandemic that content writing is pandemic proof. That means the demand for content goes up and it is recession proof. Even if there's an economic recession worldwide, the demand for content and content writers doesn't go down. So you, if you become a successful content writer, you're in a profession which is never affected. So my friends, let's now move on on how to write effective, compelling, crystal clear and superb content for your audiences. So my friends, let's get down to brass tacks and do what we have come here to do in this mini course. We have come here to learn how to write content. So now pay your attention. Take down, take a pen and paper, or if you want, take notes on your laptop or computer. Because I'm going to give you the beautiful ways to write content. Now, how will you search for content is the first question that every content writer faces. The first source of content, of course, are your own experiences. Yes, you may have gone to some place, you may have eaten certain food, you may have read a book, you may have watched a movie, you may have done something which people should know about so that they can also have a better life, they can also improve their lifestyle. So you can write content from your own experiences. That is the best source of content because as I said, our five senses are feeding us content all the time. If you have an experience and you can't write about it right now, just make a small note of it. I would encourage you all to carry a small notepad in your pocket so as and when you have these ideas, just jot them down. Now sometimes the theme of our blog or website or what a freelance buyer wants or what a company wants may not exactly be the experience that we have. What do we do in such cases? We go and interview people. Interview people such as experts. For example, if your company, if you are working for a medical company, you could go and interview a doctor on uses of a certain type of medication or how to protect them, how people should protect against a particular disease. If you are working for a, if you are blogging yourself on beauty and stuff like that, you can ask beauticians, you can ask dermatologists on what are the best, let us say, creams or lotions for a softer and a healthier skin. If not, if you don't get experts, you can ask actual users. Let us say you're an affiliate marketer and you're promoting a certain brand. You can find out a lot of details of how that particular cream works by asking a user, a real user. People love to read real life experiences. So when you're interviewing people, when you're narrating your own experience or using the experience of other users, or other people who have had a similar experience in that, they would like to identify with that. People would like to uh, repeat that experience in their own life. Now, it's not always possible to get real life experiences. And even if you get, there's one more source that we should not be neglecting. And that is excellent research. Now, what is research? Now, this is the most bothersome, yet the most enjoyable part of writing content. It depends on the way you take it. I would suggest that if you find a topic, go and research on the best possible websites. Now, what are these best possible websites? They are encyclopedias like Encyclopedia Britannica. Websites of 
excellent TV channels like Discovery, History Channel and even news channels. Websites of news companies. You have in India, Times of India, NDTV, ZTV to name a few. Websites of government agencies. The government has ministry and agencies in different different fields. They have a lot of information that we can use and that is reliable. Websites of universities in India and abroad, those who have research papers. Foreign organizations, United Nations organizations, American organizations, European organizations that are reputed, that are known to be an authority in that particular field. For that matter, you can use even those from Asia and Australia, no problems with that, as long as they are recognized and reputed. Now, my friends, one thing which you should avoid is researching into low quality or new blogs which have no authority or are highly unreliable because you may find some difficulties in getting ranking with Google. But you can always research into blogs just to get some vague idea, especially if they are high quality blogs. Now, one of the favorite resources of all bloggers and everyone who wants information is the almighty Wikipedia. Yes, you can use Wikipedia, but with caution. Let me tell you why. Wikipedia is not a definitive authority in giving you information because Wikipedia is an open source. It can be written by anyone. It can be edited by anyone. The editor or the author of an article in Wikipedia is presenting you their views. And it's not necessary that they are final views or they are not biased. I'll give an example how you must be knowing that in 1971, India went to war with Pakistan and Bangladesh was created. Now, if an Indian writes an article in Wikipedia on the 1971 war, it will be from an Indian perspective. But if the same article were to be written by a Pakistani, it would be from a Pakistani perspective. And if the same article were to be written by a Bangladeshi, it would be from his perspective because his country became independent, which was, it was earlier East Pakistan, as you might know. If an American or a European wrote this article, it would be something totally different because we don't know what they would write about. They have not experienced it. So Wikipedia can be edited by anyone. It can be contributed by anyone. You can take information from Wikipedia just for your knowledge, but never depend on Wikipedia as such. There are references at the end of every article those are a rich source of information because if the author has referred to those particular sources, you could also click on those sources and find fantastic information. Why I'm telling you to research from all these best websites? Because if your blog, if your content has to be reliable and the reader has to trust in it, then you need to provide something known as hyperlinks. Hyperlinks allow the reader to cross check the information that you have provided. When they click on the hyperlink, they will be directed to the website from where you got that information. And so they know that you have taken this information from a reputed website or a reputed source and you are speaking the truth. Always make sure that whatever information you are giving is the latest, the most relevant for the reader. We cannot depend on information that was given in 2021 because now we are in 2023. Of course, sometimes the information of 2022 or 2023 may not be available. In such cases, you can go back as far as 2021, but not to 2011, 2011 or even beyond. No, no, no. So when you're researching, don't just focus your attention on one website or one resource. Research into many websites because you will see a lot of things. You will come across a lot of information that may be relevant or may give you some idea of what you should write about. Now, the second most important thing is when you are writing, never go for an information overload. Information overload means, let us say you are going to write about soaps, 20 best soaps in India. You don't have to give a history about how soap started, who invented soap and what it contains. You can simply go uh, and give an attractive uh, opening and go on to describe the 20 soaps. Now let's come down to the other important part of content writing and that is selecting the topic 
Now, a lot of bloggers, a lot of content writers, a lot of digital marketers, a lot of your affiliate marketers, they are often confused as to how to find a topic. There are a few easy ways. The first way is to find good topics with the help of newspapers and magazines. This requires you to cultivate the reading habit, especially newspapers and magazines, because there's something fresh every day. It can give you, you know, watching the headlines or reading the articles in newspapers and uh, magazines or even watching the advertisements over there, advertisements. You can get a lot of good ideas. Let's say you come across the advertisement of some Himachal Pradesh tourism and you like it. You may wish to write something about tourism, you know, tourism at hill stations or something like that. So don't ignore these resources. You can get a lot of ideas from TV, TV ads, TV news, teleserials. You can also see other blogs in the same field to get ideas. You can also get ideas by searching an online resource called Ahrefs where there are a lot of headlines which are listed. Now, getting ideas generally comes from your own theme of your blog or your website or your affiliate marketing website or from whatever the buyer of your freelance services gives. Then in that case, he would have given you the idea already. But getting an idea, it can be tough. But if you use these resources, it can be much, much, much more simpler. Now there's something important. A lot of people who write content, especially bloggers and affiliate marketers, tend to ignore the fact that they can be the pioneers, they can be the first ones to write about something. Unfortunately, a lot of people, they go for copycat headlines, copycat ideas. Well, you can go for copycat ideas, but there is no harm in being the first one to write about something. Because eventually, people are somehow or the other going to search for that, provided it is of interest to a wide range of people. The second thing is to avoid technical words and language. I'll be coming to that as soon as I tell you about what type of language to use. To begin with, the type of language to use should be absolutely simple. In fact, it should be such that it should be understood by a fourth standard to fifth standard student. You cannot use language in your content which is so high that your reader has to reach for a dictionary or is left confused. A lot of us in India believe that the more complex our language, the more high English we use, the more people will appreciate us. No, my friends, things don't work like that online. Things work much differently online because there's something known as Flesh English Readability Test, which Google follows, which means Flesh Readability Test in simple terms means your language has to be easily understood by a fourth grader or a fifth grader student. And it has not to be complex. At that time, avoid the use of technical words unless where they are absolutely necessary. If you're doing affiliate marketing for mobile phones and stuff like that, yes, technical words will come, technical jargon will be there. I admit it will be there and you should include it. But at the same time, explain what it means. If you are describing a 6000 mAh battery, how many people would know what is mAh or what does 6000 mAh battery mean? In simple words, it means that your battery can deliver so much power and last for so many days without recharge, provided you use it judiciously. AMOLED screen, TFT screen, which one is better? If a phone has an AMOLED screen, you have to explain why it is good. If the other one has a TFT screen, you can describe why it is good or you could give a comparison. But always make sure that whenever you are using technical terms, keep the language simple and explain what it means in a simple term. Of course, there are technical writers, but technical writers might be writing for engineers, which is a different ballgame altogether. If you're writing about medicines and healthcare, make sure that you don't use words like glycemia and other things. Instead, simple words like diabetes are more easily understandable. Acetaminophen, nobody will understand. Paracetamol, people will understand. So use simple words. But if you're going to write about healthcare, I would suggest you always have a doctor handy so that you can consult them and write about healthcare. There are a lot of topics on which you can write in healthcare. 
So my friends, now you know about how to keep the language simple, clear, precise and concise. Then you will be appreciated by your readers. So my friends, now let us sum it up. I have taught you how to select a topic, how to research into a topic and a way you should write using simple language. Now to sum it up, let us see how to actually write a content. Let's get down to brass tacks. How to actually write a content? You have your own experiences or the experiences of others. You have an interview, you have an idea, you have researched into everything. And it's like you're preparing for cooking a wonderful dish. You have got all the ingredients laid out in front of you and you have lit the stove. Now, what do you do? The first thing to write your content is to organize your thoughts. Always think like the reader. You know, Lao Tzu, the famous Chinese warlord said, that the best way to defeat an enemy is to think like the enemy. So if you want to write superb content, you have to think like the reader. What does the reader want from me? What would the reader like to know about? What is the information they will look? And that I can provide so that they come to my website. Now, when you think like a reader, first thing is you organize your thought. Think, this is the information I have. What is the most relevant from this information? that I have, that I can provide to the reader so that they read my content. So once you have this clear in mind, get down to writing your content piece by piece. The first thing that you should always do is to give the hard facts of your content at the beginning in the first para. From the second para onwards or third para onwards, you can start giving some background background information, relevant information. Now, mind you, this information has to be absolutely relevant. And as you go below, add up whatever information that is relevant, but may not be so important. You see, on top is all the important information. And as you go below, the value of that information or the importance of that information goes down, but the information is still relevant. And at the end or somewhere in between, you can always give something known as a call to action. That means you're compelling the reader to take an action, whether it is for an admission for an IIT course, whether it is to buy a toothpaste, whether it is to buy a mobile phone, whether it is to visit a place, always make sure that you include a call to action or even inaction. There's a COVID-19 pandemic out there. Don't go out. So that means you have cautioned the reader, don't go out, don't take action. That is how you structure your content in brief. Now, my friends, there are basically three distinct styles of writing content, which are very, 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 very important. A lot of people don't know this and they go about writing content in a haphazard way, like a headless chicken running here and there. So I'll tell you about the first style. This is commonly known as the inverted pyramid style. What is a pyramid? A pyramid is, of course, you know, a triangle. What is an inverted pyramid? An inverted pyramid is an inverted triangle. Now, this style of writing is very common among news persons, among journalists and reporters, feature writers, etc. Why? Because in an inverted pyramid, all the top, the top is heavy. All the re relevant and important information is contained in the first two or three paragraphs. Then comes all the information which is relevant but not so important and you end with a call to action or something very simple just like conclusion, concluding or summing up all that you have written in a couple of sentences or three sentences at the most. Somewhere in between you can add a call to action or you can add a call to action in the end. But the inverted pyramid normally works the best. Why? According to research in psychology, the human time span, attention span rather, is between 7 to 10 seconds only. This means you have between 7 to 10 seconds only to grab the reader's attention, to make him or her want to read the full article. If you lose those 7 to 10 seconds, and your introduction and your headline are not appealing, 
you are going to lose that reader not only for now maybe permanently so be very careful the human attention span is just between 7 to 10 seconds and what they read in that time is what will decide whether your content is successful or not now this is that's why we use the inverted pyramid style but then there's also something known as a pyramid style now what is a pyramid style basically if you see a triangle the top is always pointed it's like an arrow now in this we start the intro by compelling the reader to do something i'm giving an example hey are you going to die tomorrow is your family secure after your death are you sure that they will be having enough food on their plates after you are dead will you be sure they are able to pay the rent after you are dead will they, your children be able to continue studies after your death now if i write something like this obviously i have got your attention because i have scared you death is of course the only fact in life i have scared you so you continue reading no i am not talking about death yes my purpose has been served i have got your attention because I have touched on some very sensitive points. Hey, are you going to die tomorrow? Is your family going to be safe after your death? Will they have enough money after your death? But what I am doing is I am going to speak in the next few paras about life insurance. This is useful for both affiliate marketers, content writers, if you are working for an insurance company or any company that sells insurance or even bloggers. You have started, got the attention of the reader. It was maybe an unpleasant introduction, but you have still grabbed his attention. And then you have started explaining the benefits of life insurance. Why should a person put money on life insurance when there are many more attractive schemes? And when you end, that is the base of the pyramid, which is heavy. You give the most important information that life insurance policies are available in India from let's say 100 rupees onwards. The cheapest ones being the ones sold by the postal department or called the postal life insurance to the most expensive ones which come from private insurance companies or foreign insurance companies and so on and so forth. And that's where you can add all the action, the links, actionable links. If you still want to go further, you can include the names of the companies that are providing life insurance and provide affiliate links if they have an affiliate program in your article. This is the pyramid style. It basically involves grabbing the attention of your reader and getting him to focus on what you have written. Now what is the third style? The third style to write is what I call as the polygon style. Now what is a polygon? We all have heard about octagon which has got eight sides, pentagon which has got five sides. What is a polygon? A polygon is a geometrical pattern that has got multiple dots. Okay, not one, not two, not three, not five, not eight, not seven. Seven is septagon, nine is nonagon. So a polygon has many sides. Now this type of uh, content is generally written without any structure like the pyramid or the inverted pyramid. This is also superb for writing content especially for affiliate marketers. You give a very strong intro that grabs the attention of the reader and then you start describing what you are selling through affiliate links. It could be mobile phones, it could be soaps, it could be uh, holiday packages. Insurance policies, credit cards from banks, uh, uh, mutual funds, anything. This doesn't follow any structure because when you are talking about, let's say, one mutual fund or the other mutual fund, you are just going to give the information as it exists. So you are not going to exaggerate. You are just going to give the real information as it exists. So each piece of information is relevant. So this means that you don't have to differentiate between what is less relevant and what is more relevant. All of them are equally relevant. So you don't need to follow the pyramid or the inverted pyramid style. In this polygon structure, at let's say you are describing uh, XYZ mutual funds. 
you can provide a hyperlink click here to subscribe click here to subscribe so basically it gives you freedom of thought freedom of writing without having to focus on who is more important who is less important or what matters what does not matter these are the three best ways to write content which are followed by bloggers worldwide by content writers worldwide and you too can safely follow these steps now that you know how to research into content how to organize your thoughts how to use the language and how to write content the pyramid style the inverted pyramid style and the polygon style let us come down to something much more important which many people forget and that is about the ethics of content yes my friends you have to follow certain ethics when we are writing content if we forget these ethics you can get into serious trouble legally or you can lose your reputation you might not find jobs or your blog would be a failure your affiliate marketing venture can fail miserably what are these ethics the first and foremost rule which many people tend to forget is that you are responsible for your content nobody else not me not him not him not him you are responsible for your content in every single way the reader will hold you accountable for every single piece of information that you are giving companies if they are affected they will hold you responsible for every piece of information you are giving the courts if it comes to that can hold you accountable for every piece of information that you are giving let me tell you why in many foreign countries bloggers have the same status as journalists but in these countries there's something known as the press laws if a journalist commits some mistake if a journalist commits some problems there are well defined press laws to look into that and resolve the issue in a court in india unfortunately we don't have well defined press laws so if a journalist commits any mistake a blogger commits any mistake first thing is that bloggers don't have the same status as journalists both are viewed differently a journalist has some sort of a maybe some standing but bloggers i don't think have any so far now if a blogger or a journalist commits a mistake they can be tried according to the indian penal code or as criminals companies can sue you for misinformation sometimes even a reader can sue you because they something happened which caused them a loss not willingly i mean if you have done, written something in good faith and you have proven that the information was legitimate but if the reader made a mistake of course you don't have to face any problems but if you have made a mistake genuine mistake and if somebody stands up and says that yes this because of this i suffered or a company takes objection because of you their brand got spoiled or their image got spoiled you can land in severe legal problem therefore remember you are responsible you and only you are responsible for your content what is the second ethics the second ethic is never plagiarize that is never take anybody else's content and claim it to be yours why because if that person has made mistakes you will repeat the same mistakes that person may face intellectual property right uh, lawsuit in the court and you also will be facing the same when you plagiarize you are leaving yourself open to prosecution both from the content owner and from others because that person may have written the content with an interview which was not given to you it was given to that person so somebody can object that why have you used my words on your website unless you have taken the permission so be very careful this is the second most ethic the third most important ethics in writing content is that your content has to be universal which means that it should be even though you may be writing for let us say in india if you are writing it may be for the people residents of bengal but your content should be appealing to all indians why or people all over the world why because that is going to increase your readership if your content has universal acceptance somebody in usa or canada or even in china or vanuatu for that matter may want to know what you have written about may out of curiosity or due to general knowledge purposes search for that and find your content relevant so my friends 
I have given you the basics of content writing in this mini course. This can get anyone started off as a content writer. You don't have to worry about anything, whether you are a school dropout or a college dropout, whether you are a graduate, postgraduate, engineer, doctor, professional, housewife, retired person, senior citizen, anyone, anyone can write content with these things that I have taught you. I hope you like the mini course. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment and ask. I'll be glad to answer all your questions. If there are any suggestions, please feel free to write about them and I'll be happy to accept them and comply where possible. And if you like this course, please subscribe to this channel because we'll be giving you a lot of information, not only on content writing, but blogging, affiliate marketing and lots more things where you can earn a side income or even have a superb primary and main income. Thank you, my friends, on behalf of Dematic Digital, our founder Pritam Nagrale and myself, Ashwin Honavar, your content coach for now. See you soon. Wishing you happy writing and happy careers as content writer. Bye-bye.